in that case we can move on to stochastic backpropagation this one is a simpler model compared to what you had in the previous slide um, but this is an instantiation of a model over there things were general we were keeping them as generic as possible you have this likelihood you have uh, the posterior you have the prior so we were thinking in an abstract sense but this is an instantiation of a model and the model is going to be called deep latent gaussian model dlgm but what you're going to be doing is exactly what we did in the previous slide now you have a model what is the model you have a sequence of mutually independent gaussian variables if you want to draw analogies to the previous slide these are your z's let's call them kisi you have l of them and each one is going to be normally distributed with some mean and some variance actually the, your mean is zero the variance is identity okay so far so good you start from the last one you start from l you multiply it by a matrix that's going to give you some h so kisi's are latent g is some parameter matrix and then that's going to give you h so if you know kisi if you know g you're going to know h okay so far so good now you're going to go backward if you know h at the last layer you're going to push it through a multi-layer perceptron that's going to give you something and you're going to know what values you're going to get because you know the last guy and you know hl so we are fine here then you look at l minus one you multiply it by a matrix add it to the outcome of this multi-layer perceptron you go to the previous layer so it's very similar to what you have with recurrent neural networks what do you do next you keep repeating that now that you know l minus one you're going to go go ahead and compute l minus two from l minus two you're going to compute l minus three knowing these uh, random variables which you can just sample from a normal distribution so everything is random at this point where is the data coming from where is the learning signal coming from they're going to come from a likelihood conditioned on the first uh, layer so now you are going from layer l and then you're going back to layer zero if you know this quantity that you're conditioning on, then you're gonna have a simple distribution. Pi is gonna end up being simple, and that depends on the data. If your data are images, you can just say this is normal. And this is gonna just define your mean, or it's gonna define your mean and a standard deviation of that distribution. And this is where your data is. Now you have a model for your data. And remember, you don't have any labels here. It's an unsupervised learning problem. So you know v or you have data on v and as i mentioned these are just matrices learnable parameters your g's and tl's are your multi-layer perceptrons perhaps a shallow one with one hidden layer and pi could be any appropriate distribution and that depends on the data you're going to make a simple assumption on pi you know it's functional form okay what do you want to learn you want to learn what is g you want to learn what is uh, what are the parameters of your TL, your MLPs? And let's put everything in a list. And let's call that theta G. And these are the things that you want to learn. Again, like what we, the problem that we had just now is that you need to marginalize out all of these KCs. You need to integrate them out to give you your marginal likelihood to maximize. And at the same time, this model is a little bit more complex and what we covered in the previous slide here you're assuming now everything is going to end up in bayesian you're going to assume that you have a prior on your parameters as well maybe your parameters have a mean and some standard deviation okay so far so good now you want to do inference here this is a stochastic neural network there is a stochasticity everywhere these kisses are stochastic you're sampling from a distribution even your parameters so everything is random variables. The only thing that you know are your data, which you can perhaps put a matrix, put in a matrix. Let's assume this is just tabular data, which doesn't have to be. This could be made, this could be images. So you have an Excel spreadsheet. Each row is your observations, and uh, each observation is d-dimensional. You have d features for it. That's your data. And it's exactly what I just explained. N is gonna be 
counting your observations and each observation is d-dimensional. What you need is the log of your likelihood. This is marginal likelihood. And then you want to minimize, so this is what you need, the negative of the log of your likelihood. But then you have problems here. You need to know what is Kc. You need to know what is thetas, what are the parameters of your MLPs and these Gs to be able to write down your likelihood, but you don't know them. So you need to marginalize them out. You need to integrate them out based on the prior. And this is exactly what I mentioned in the previous slide. You're just gonna multiply by a distribution and divide by the same distribution, and it's not gonna change anything. This is gonna end up being equality. This is just gonna cancel. And then you need to take that log, put it inside your integration, and once you write down the math, you're gonna end up with the KL divergence between Q and the prior on KC. And remember, the joint distribution between KC and your parameters, you're just gonna say that this is the product of P of KC times P of theta. This is P of theta, and then P of KC are just normals. So you're gonna end up with the KL divergence between Q and P, and at the same time, you're gonna end up with the expectation with respect to Q, because this is where that, that trick is useful. This integral in addition to that Q is gonna give you the expectation with respect to Q. Your log, you took it and put it inside. That's why this is an inequality using Jensen's inequality. The log is gonna end up here times your probability. So this formulation makes sense. Okay, perfect. Now, rather than minimizing L, you can minimize this other objective function. And the other one doesn't really matter. Now the question is, what is your Q? You are gonna choose a Q given your data, given the parameters of your model. Actually, given your data, you are gonna write a model that is parameterized for Q. So theta R are the parameters of Q. Theta G are the parameters of your prior and uh, your likelihood these MLPs and Gs. So in the end of the day, you have some parameters for Q, you have some parameters for uh, your decoder. So you can call this your decoder, you can call this your encoder. Theta R are the parameters of your encoder, theta G are the parameters of your decoder. You're going from the code space, from the latent space, to the observation space. The other one is going from the observation space to the code space. And this is where you're gonna put your uh, neural networks. And this is where you have full control over it. You can say that my observations are independent. At the same time, the dimensions of my QC variables are, in, are independent. And this is exactly your variational model or recognition model. And as you can see, everything here has a formula. These are normal, normal, pi, you know it, this is normal. Mm -hmm. Unlike the previous paper, which was sort of abstract, this is actually a model that you're writing. And you know exactly what is theta g, you know exactly what is theta r, and those are the parameters of these two neural networks. Given the data, give me the variance, given the data, give me the mean, and so far so good. And this is exactly the cue that you're gonna put here and here, perfect. And by the way, I mentioned that you don't need this KL divergence, you actually need that. So there are some terms that you're ignoring, but these terms, you actually need them. This is the actual inequality. So you're gonna be minimizing this, which is gonna push your loss down. Okay, perfect. Now you say why normal? The reason is the distribution for Q is normal with some mean and some variance, the prior was normal with some mean and some identity as its uh, covariance matrix. And you know exactly what is going to be the KL divergence between two normal distributions. Just look at the formula on Wikipedia and that's going to give you this. Okay? So you know exactly what you're going to get out of this. You know this term exactly. And you know everything. What else? We are interested in this F of V. These terms here are coming out of the KL divergence term. You see the trace, there is a trace here. You see mu transpose times mu. These are gonna give you these square terms here. And then you have log of the determinant of your variance. So these terms are coming from here. And then the other terms are gonna come from this formulation once you expand it out. 
the log of this distribution times another one is going to be the addition of log of this times plus the log of the other one. And this is uh, where, based on this assumption, that is just normal, or perhaps you don't even need to make any assumptions on it. You can just say, this is normal with some mean that are my parameters. You're going to end up with this term. Okay. The, the other thing that's left are these expectations with respect to Q of a log term of the probability of data given uh, your codes, your QC variables. And now you're here. The rest of them, you know how to differentiate and you're going to be fine. You know their functional form. Let's see. Let's say you want to take the derivative with respect to the parameters of the decoder. Q is your encoder, the parameters of your decoder. It's very easy to differentiate with respect to them because this integral, this expectation, doesn't depend on theta g's. So you can simply take the gradient of expectation, which is going to be equal to the expectation of the gradients. And this other term depends on theta g's. Its derivative is going to be 2 times 1 over 2. They're going to cancel, and you're going to get this term. And this is your decoder. Okay, perfect. So that one was easy. The hard one is taking derivative with respect to the encoder, with respect to theta r's, with respect to the parameters of this mu and this c. That's the hard one. And this is where stochastic backpropagation is going to come in. Why is it a stochastic backpropagation? Because you're sampling from a normal distribution where you know the mean and the variance. You're sampling, you're taking derivatives with respect to uh, expectation where the thing that you are taking, the distribution that you're using to compute your expectation is dependent on your parameters. What are we doing here? This is a stochastic backpropagation. Qc is a stochastic variable, in this case, normal. F, in our case, is a function. And in our case, it's going to end up being log of P of V conditioned on H of Qc. And the entire thing, you can say it's just a function of Qc. Now you're taking derivative with respect to theta of an integral, which depends on an expectation, which depends on parameters. And in our case, we made the assumption that this is normal with some mean and some variance. And I'm going to claim it's enough to compute the derivatives with respect to mean and the standard deviation. Why is that? Don't worry about this formulation yet. I'm going to go back to it. You want to take the derivative of f of v with respect to the parameters. You can take, based on chain rule, the derivative with respect to mu times derivative of mu with respect to your parameters, plus the derivative of f with respect to the covariance matrix times the derivative of the covariance with respect to your parameters. And that's why you need this guy. The other term is similar. And your covariance, you're going to parameterize it using R and R transpose so that it is actually a covariance matrix. And you're going to take derivatives with respect to R, which is equivalent to taking derivatives with respect to C. It's a change of variable. Okay, now let's go back. Now that we know we need these derivatives, let's just compute them. Derivative of expectation with respect to normal. C is a function of R. And then Qc is getting sampled from this normal distribution. What can you do? It's going to be helpful if you can get rid of the parameters in your expectation. How can you do it? This is the reparameterization trick. Compute your expectation with respect to a distribution that doesn't depend on any parameters, in this case, normal, with zero as its mean and identity. And then your Qc is going to be equal to epsilon being sampled from normal or Gaussian distribution times r plus mu. Now, this is exactly your Qc, and your integral doesn't depend or your expectation doesn't depend on parameters anymore. Now you can just take that derivative and push it inside. And that's exactly what we are doing here. G is going to give you the gradient of your function. And because you are taking derivative with respect to R, Qc, or epsilon is going to come out. Epsilon times the derivative of your function, times the gradient of your function. And this is a reparameterization trick. 
this formula here is your reparameterization trick, and this is how you're gonna handle a stochastic neural network and a stochastic backpropagation. And in the end of the day, once you have your derivatives with respect to your parameters, you can just do gradient descent, optimize over your parameters, and then you can come up with the samples from your distribution. So was everything clear? Any questions? Okay, perfect.